Welcome friends once again. In this session, we are going to talk about the higher education in India. Let me begin with a quote which emphasizes on the importance of education by Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. At the end of this session, you will explain the meaning and significance of higher education, describe the functioning of regulatory bodies of higher education, state the different types of higher education institutions and elaborate the current schemes for higher education in India. If we talk of higher education, India has the third largest higher education system in the world after the United States and China. The institutional framework of higher education in India consists of universities and colleges. There are 760 universities and 38,498 colleges in India as per the 2015 data. If we look at the higher education in India, at the head we have the Ministry of Human Resource Development and under that there are two main departments. The first, Department of School Education and Literacy and the Department of Higher Education. The Ministry of Human Resource Development has the following objectives. Formulating the national policy on education and ensure that its implementation is in letter and spirit. Plan development including expanding access and improving quality of the educational institutions throughout the country including in the regions where people do not have an easy access to education, paying special attention to disadvantaged groups like the poor, females and the minorities, provide financial help in the form of scholarships, loan subsidy, etc. to deserving students from deprived sections of the society, encouraging international cooperation in the field of education including working closely with the UNESCO and foreign governments as well as universities to enhance the educational opportunities in the country. The Department of Higher Education which functions under the Ministry of Higher Education has is engaged in bringing world class opportunities of higher education and research to the country so that Indian students do not find themselves lacking when facing an international platform. For this, the government has launched joint ventures and signed MOUs to help the Indian student benefit from the world opinion. The University Grants Commission of India has a very, very important role to play in the higher education system. It is a statutory body set up by the Indian Union government in accordance to the UGC Act 1956. The UGC was first formed in 1945 to oversee the work of three central universities of Aligarh, Banaras and Delhi. Its responsibility was extended in 1947 to cover all Indian universities. In 1949, a recommendation was made by the University Education Commission under the chairmanship of Sri Radha Krishnan to, recon to reconstitute the UGC along similar lines of the University Grants Com Committee of the United Kingdom. In 1952, the government decided that all grants to universities and higher learning institutions should be handled by the UGC. Subsequently, an inauguration was held on 28 December 1953 by Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, the Minister of Education, Natural Resources and Scientific Research. The University Grants Commission of India became a statutory body under the University Grants Commission Act of 1956. 
In 1994 and 1995, the UGC decentralized its operations by setting up six regional centers at Pune, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Bhopal, Guwahati and Bangalore. In December 2015, the Indian government set a national institutional of ranking framework under UGC which would rank all educational institutes by April 2016. UGC also conducts the national eligibility test for appointment of teachers in colleges and universities. It also provides grants for minor and major research projects to individuals working in colleges and universities. It also awards fellowship for research scholars to promote research. Development grants are also given to colleges and in universities to various institutions so as to develop both their infrastructure as well as the quality of education which is being imparted in these institutions. The functions of the UGC. The UGC enforces its standards, advises the government and helps coordination between the centre and the state. It provides recognition to universities in India and disbursements of funds to such recognized universities and colleges. Accreditation for higher learning is overseen by 15 autonomous institutions established by the UGC. These are the All India Council for Technical Education, the Distance Education Council, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, the Bar Council of India, the Board of Theological Education and the Senate of Scrampers, National Council for Teacher Education, Rehabilitation Council of India, Medical Council of India, Pharmacy Council of India, Indian Nursing Council, Dental Council of India, Central Council of Homeopathy, Central Council of Indian Medicine, National Council for Rural Institutes, State Councils of Higher Education, Council of Architecture and Veterinary Council of India. The colleges, the institutions and the universities, these are a major part of the higher education institutions. So, the higher education institutions are classified as university or university level institutions, colleges or institutions which are affiliated to or recognized by the university and standalone institutions which may not be affiliated or recognized by the universities. Let us look at the different types of higher education institutions. We have the central universities. These are the universities which, which are established or incorporated by the central act. We have the state universities a university which is established or incorporated by the provincial act or by a state act like the Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. We have open universities where the university imparts education exclusively through distance education in any branch or branches of knowledge. For example, the IGNU. We have also have private universities. Private university is a university established through a state central act by a sponsoring body that is a society registered under the Societies Registration Act 1860 or any other corresponding law for the time being in force in a state or a public trust or a company registered under section 25 of the Companies Act 1956. We also have deemed universities, an un institution deemed to be a university commonly known as deemed university refers to a high performing institute which has been so declared by the central government under section 3 of the University Grants Commission Act 1956. 
we have institutes of national importance. This is an institution established by the Act of Parliament and declared as institution of national importance such as All Indian Institute of Technology, National Institute of Technology. Institute under State Legislature Act, it is an institution established on in or incorporated by a State Legislature Act such as the Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad or the Indira Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences, Patna. Other institutes are like institutions which do not fall in any of the above categories but are established through state or central act and are empowered to award degrees like the National Institute of Fashion Technology established through an act of parliament.